the viscous forces are a little more tricky. They come up in three terms. So if we look two-dimensionally in the x and the y direction, then there'll be a shear stress going that way on the bottom and a shear stress going that way on the top. The shear stress will be mu di u di y due to changes in u with y. So if there's a velocity gradient in this direction, if the velocity is higher on top than it is on the bottom, then the fluid up here is pulling our little element this way, and the fluid down here is going more slowly, and it's pulling our little element back that way. So the force on the top will be tau 2 times the area on the top. The force on the bottom will be tau 1 times the area on the bottom. They're both the same because it's a little square box. So tau 2a minus tau 1a is the difference in the forces. The mass again is density times volume. So a times delta y, the distance up there. If we rearrange that, that's 1 over rho. Tau 2 minus tau 1 over delta y, or 1 over rho di tau di y. But tau is already mu di u di y, so we've got 1 over rho di by di y of mu di u di y. If mu is a constant, and that's what we expect for our Newtonian fluid, then it can come outside the derivative and we'll wind up with mu over rho di 2u di y squared. Likewise, if we look now down from the top, so we rotate 90 degrees and look at things in the xz plane, then we have exactly the same arrangement in the z direction except it's delta z instead of delta y. If we have a velocity gradient in this direction, faster moving fluid here, slower moving fluid here, then we'll have shear stresses as shown and we'll still have tau equal to mu di u di z in this direction and that's going to lead us to a term mu over rho di 2u di z squared. So we've now got two of the terms in our, our uh, equation. Now if we go back to the xy direction and look at the stresses acting on these faces due to the fact that the flow is stretching, we can have tau 5 and tau 6. These are viscous normal stresses. They're perpendicular to the surface and they come about to resist the stretching or contracting in the x direction. And that leads us to a mu over rho di 2u di x squared term. So now we've got all three terms. Force per unit mass is negative 1 over rho di p di x plus mu over rho di 2u di x squared di 2u di y squared di 2u di z squared plus g of x. And the kinematic viscosity is just the ratio mu over rho. And that's true by definition. So there's why we have the three lines there. So this was the acceleration that we saw, or the change in the total momentum in our control volume, and it must be equal to the force per unit mass. And there's our Navier-Stokes equation.